Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Today we're going to continue of our lesson of chapter 3. So today we're going to look at subtopic 3.4 transport system in plants. Before this, we are already learned about the human transport system and also other organisms. So today we're going to look at the transport system in plants. From this figure, okay, figure 3.15, you can look at in textbook. Okay, you can you can see the situation of the plant from normal become wilted and then after the plant is watered, so the plant getting normal back. So what happened to the changes of the plant? Okay, this is what happened to the plant. Okay, the process is we call as transpiration. What is transpiration? Transpiration is the process of water loss in the form of water vapor from the surface of the leaf to the air through evaporation. So there are three points that you have to know from the definition of transpiration. Number one is water loss in the form of water vapor. Number two, happen on the surface of leaves and through evaporation. These three points that you have to focus in the definition of transpiration. And the leaves are part of plant where most of water loss occurs through transpiration. Okay, this is the figure that explain about the transpiration and absorption of water in a plant. You can look at start from the start from the uh, start from uh, the root, okay, and then the water is transport throughout all the parts of the plant. Okay, you can see the red arrow is the movement of the water from the root until the left from the plant. Okay, we look at the cross section of a leaf. Okay, the epidermis of the leaf is made up of a single layer of epidermis cell covering both the upper and lower surface of the leaf, namely upper epidermis and also lower epidermis. And the epidermis cells secrete a waxy cuticle which covers the outer surface of the leaf to reduce water loss during transpiration. Okay. To reduce water loss during transpiration. Okay, you can see the cuticle located at the upper epidermis. Okay, so there is no critical at the lower epidermis. So, uh, when the critical is located at the upper epidermis, it will reduce the loss of water instead of lower epidermis. Okay, what is the function of stoma during transpiration? Okay, most of the water loss during transpiration in plants occurs through the stomata pores found in the epidermis of the leaf. When photosynthesis takes place during the day, the stoma is usually open. Okay, this uh, process already learned in chapter 2 about the opening of stoma. And then the opening of stoma always also causes the plant to lose water through transpiration instead of uh, gas uh, absorbed and released at that time. Okay, stoma is close to reduce the loss of water through transpiration. And then this what happened to the stoma when 
the process happen okay we can look at the stomata open here and then this one is closed stomata as we know the opening and the closing of stomata is um, controlled by the gut cell this is the exudation or gutation it's the process uh, also is the process where the water loss from the plant okay is this we call as the gutation <coughs> because it happened through hydro thoughts that are always open at the edge of the leaves this one is the edge each of the leaves and the cartation usually occurs at night or when the air humidity is high okay. and then the cartation is different from dewdrops dewdrops are formed from the this is the dewdrop this is the cartation cartation is uh, the water loss process but the dew is come from the condensation process of water vapor in the atmosphere into water and now we can look at the uh, the factors that effect okay the factor that that effect the rate of transpiration Okay, the transpiration occurs mainly through the stomata and due to this the number of stomata affects the rate of transpiration in plants okay this is one of the factors and then the transpiration is faster if the plant has more stomata okay and then this is the main factors affecting the rate of transpiration this this is more to the environment factors compared to before this we look at the the um the number of the stomata this one is the environment factors okay one is the humidity the more the higher the humidity the the lesser the rate of transpiration okay number two is the surrounding temperature the higher the temperature the higher the transpiration rate okay this is number one this is number two next is number three air movement or we call as the wind the existing of wind okay the higher the air movement the higher the rate of transpiration the last one is the light intensity okay the higher the light intensity the higher the rate of transpiration so this is all four uh, factors that affect the rate of transpiration air humidity surrounding temperature air movement and also the light intensity And then this is about the structures and functions of the component in vascular bundles of plants. Okay, the transpiration facilitates the transportation of water and mineral salts in plants. Then during transpiration, water and dissolved mineral salts diffuse into the plant through the roots to the stem and leaves. Okay, this is the figure where the transport system in flowering plant and distribution of vascular bundles in leaves, stem and roots. Okay. Uh, if we can look at the cross section of the root, we can see it has the bun vascular bundle that called xylem and also phloem. Okay, this is the part that transport water and also uh, food or we call as glucose or sucrose and this is the 
cross section of stem okay you can look at the allocation of phloem and xylem inside okay and then also the cross section of leaf okay you can look at the location of xylem and also the phloem Okay, the transport system in flowering plants is made up is made up of two transport tissues, namely xylem and phloem, which are found in group of vessels known as vascular bundles. Okay, so as uh, the figure before, you already know that xylem transport water, and the phloem transport food or we call it as glucose or sucrose inside the plant and the location is um, the xylem is located in the middle while the phloem located uh, on the surrounding of the xylem okay so after you have finished cover the subtopic 3.4 okay you are going to do this practice okay formative practice 3.4 at page One hundred and twelve. One hundred and twelve. Please do this exercise in your exercise book and turn in your pro formative practice after you settle in Google Classroom. Okay, class. That's all for today. If you have anything to uh, ask me, you can private message me. And I hope you are enjoying learning today. Thank you. Na and assalamu alaikum.